This video is going to be a film study look at Jermaine Johnson, the second year defensive end slash outside linebacker for the New York Jets, who now has five sacks on the season after a half sack last night in the Jets' 16-12 loss to the Raiders. I think 30 total tackles. He's putting together spectacular plays against the run and the pass. It's not just the physical attributes and the, the ability to win with a bull rush. With it. it's, it's amazing. But it's the awareness level. And I'm going to show the first two plays I'll show you in this film study is going to be my attempt to try to illustrate that. The high level of awareness and recognition that he has for a second-year player. After they drafted Will McDonald, I was a little concerned about the number of snaps that Johnson would be getting. I felt like last year he could have gotten more snaps. He only had two and a half sacks as a rookie. As a Ravens content creator, I saw him in week one of 2022, and I thought he played quite well that day. He just didn't get many snaps. Now, right now, he's getting about 45 or 50 snaps a game. It's tough to get sacks in the NFL. It's even tougher to get them when you're playing with a bunch of other jackals, Huff, Quinn and Williams, and others that are constantly trying to get to the quarterback. Let's get to the film, and I'm going to show you the first play that is, is unbelievable pass defense against the Eagles late in the game. They used this stunt multiple times. If, if Jermaine Johnson isn't here to make contact with Dallas Goddard the moment that the ball, ball arrives, this is going to be a big play. There's nobody else there. He's great awareness to peel off from his stunt. You can see that Jets are bringing two guys through to B-gap. Impossible to pick that up. Edge defender as well, so three guys off the same side, away from the back. And then... Johnson's going to peel off to Goddard, who is uncovered totally. If Johnson doesn't make this play at the exact moment he does, this is going to be a, an opportunity for Goddard to get at least a first down on a third and nine. It's the recognition, and then as he gets over here, he's ahead of the blocking scheme. If he's another half step behind, those blockers potentially will be able to pick him up and avoid the negative play for the, from an Eagles perspective. As it stands, Johnson gets you know what I would call a pass defensed, and then Quinn and Williams with the interception. Show you the end zone angle. Hopefully, you get a little bit more appreciation of it. It's the awareness and the recognition to he's he's just there if you ask me to occupy people to force the center to step to Williams, the guard to step to him, the tackle to step here, so that all this can overwhelm the two on the back side. And then he peels out, which maybe he was the design of the blitz is for him to do anyway, regardless of whether he's assigned to peel out of there or not. It's an unbelievable play because no one else is on Dallas Goddard. I'm sure that other people have covered this uh, for Jets content creators, but this is an amazing play by anyone, uh, let alone a defensive end slash outside linebacker who's not typically dropping out in pass coverage. Earlier in the game, first possession, he's off to the right side here. Generally, I see him on the left, but he's off to the right side here. He's going to get a pass deflected. The awareness to see the running back trying to clear him. Swift is on the opposite side in terms of alignment. Johnson's here. Swift is here. Swift's going to try to release out of there to the opposite side. Johnson tries to win to the high side, walks the tackle back, has awareness that the route is developing. So as soon as he sees Jalen Hurts start to pull the pin on the grenade, he gets his hands up, gets a pass deflected. Like I said earlier, it's difficult to get sacks in the NFL, especially when you've got teammates that are that are so adept at getting there. Huff on the other side, his get off is amazing as a speed rusher, if you ask me. Can't really deal with him with a tight end. This is Daniel Bellinger, the really high level second year tight end. For the Giants. Bellinger's no match for the jab step here. Once, once Johnson steps to the inside and gets any type of movement by Bellinger in this direction, even the slight movement that you saw before I paused the screen, he's able to win with the hands, clear Bellinger, shed it, go, tack Tom, go sack Tommy DeVito. Additionally, the bull rush that I mentioned is a constant threat with him. I think he had 17 and a half sacks his last year at Florida State, some of which were a bull rush variety. Didn't see it work as often last year. He's walking people back to the quarterback here, often in 2023. The Jets have so many ways to get to the quarterback and so many talented defensive linemen uh, in their rotation. 
Jermaine Johnson is, to me, looks like he's as good as it gets right now. Had another sack in that Week 5 win against the Giants. This one's going to be of, the diff, of a different variety. This is going to be a stunt inside to basically clear the right tackle out of the way for the D tackle to loop around. But he gets to such depth because of his size and explosiveness and commitment to that inside shoulder of the right tackle that when the right tackle peels off to the defensive, other defensive lineman for the Jets, he's already at such depth that the right guard can't do anything with him. We'll give you the end zone angle. Like I said, there's multiple players that are there. Only had two and a half sacks last year, and I remember hearing things about him not being a, a pass rusher. It's like it's way too soon to judge some of these guys that as as rookies or even second year players, especially when they aren't getting consistent snaps. He is this year and he's producing. It's going to be a Bryce Huff sack on third down. Johnson's over here against Phillips. Again, walking him back, but Huff is there so soon. I mean, Huff's speed rush. It kind of reminds me of James Houston the fourth. Uh, how quickly he is, how he's able to get up on top of people and force them to set at such a depth that it helps everyone else out as well. I feel like Johnson was always a guy who was really good against the run at Florida State. It's a counter concept. They're going to pull Kelsey out, and Swift is going to try to run off tackle. Johnson is located here. He uses his hands really well. He uses his hands to shed people, kind of like you, in the past game, like you saw with Daniel Bellinger. Also to establish his bull rush as first point of contact. Additionally, in the run game, he's using it, in this case, to shed Kelsey, one of the best centers in the game, on a kickout block. And then dive inside to limit Swift to only two yards. Against the Giants, he's the read man down here at the bottom side. Lined up in a nine technique outside of Bellinger, who releases inside. Now, there's a defensive tackle, 94, there as well. Jets do a great job playing team defense. As a read man in this game, at least, whether it was Tyrod Taylor or DeVito, he is stepping down consistently, and oftentimes they're still giving the football. He's closing down as the football is given to the running back. In this case, limit Barkley to a two-yard gain. Up top, the read man again, like I said earlier, consistently uses his hands in the run game and the pass game. In this case, his hands take him down to the tight end, who then tries to release outside of him, and Johnson ignores it. He's got a safety outside, so he's going to step down once again and get involved in a tackle against Saquon Barkley. The defensive tackles are holding up at the point of attack in terms of not being washed down. And then you've also got C.J. Mosley, who snuck in here on the backside to basically sandwich Barkley with Jermaine Johnson and the D-tackle, hold him to a one-yard gain. Last play, he's going to fold inside. Again, beats Bellinger. The scheme is a little different here than some of the other ones I've showed you because he's trying to base block Johnson. He's no match. Johnson, I'm not saying he can't be blocked by any tight end, but in the film that I've watched, of the last three games. He's certainly winning most of the time in the point of attack against tight ends. If you're a Jets fan and you watch, for, watch this long, first of all, thank you. Second of all, let me know if you think that the way that I've broken down the plays is in line with what you're seeing from Jermaine Johnson. It's not just the sacks, if you ask me. Of course, five is a, is a great number to have. You know, Past the halfway point of the season, obviously, but certainly is, it looks like a guy who's going to end up with eight, ten sacks, something like that. The run game and his ability to close down his – is, is all in line with what projections were when he was drafted. I'm talking about pre-draft. He fell a little bit, if you ask me. Team, There'll probably be teams who wish they had taken him a, a little earlier. But it's the awareness level. Those first two plays that I showed you, and like I said, I'm sure that many people have broken it down from a Jets perspective. The awareness level on that pass defense against Goddard to force the interception, and then the pass deflected earlier in the game on the first possession against the Eagles. He's going up against the left tackle. Swift is open out there on the left flats. This looks like a guy who's blossoming to me. I'm not sure what his grades are by PFF. I have no idea what people in the New York media are talking about with him because I don't have time to pay attention to any of those things, let alone Ravens media, which is the primary team that I cover. 
But this guy on film is someone who I followed since week one of 2022 because I thought, why isn't he getting more reps? It's nice to see him getting more consistent playing time, being used in the rotation that the Jets ha have there on their fantastic D-line. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Jets fans would appreciate this content, this film study look at Jermaine Johnson halfway through his second year in the NFL, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.